Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Orsi, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this second video tutorial on Bootstrap, I want to actually start designing a site uh, and create some multi-column uh, layout where we can actually display a responsive website where you can shrink it in and the columns will change. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at leanpub.com slash white-hat-hacking. This is a book that I'm writing. It's all about white hat hacking and application security. Um, if you're interested in writing secure applications, you might want to check this out. It helps walk through um, actually public vulnerabilities that are um, uh, disclosed by sites like Twitter, Shopify, uh, HackerOne, Coinbase, etc. And um, they're all from the HackerOne website. And essentially, uh, these are um, applications or rather companies that will actually publicly disclose vulnerabilities that have been found against their site um, for people to learn. And so you can become a white hat hacker, register on hackerone.com and get paid to actually find these. But additionally, at a minimum, if you read about these, you can find out how hackers might be approaching your site and develop more secure web applications. Uh, it's pretty crazy how uh, readily vulnerable some applications are, um, which you can see in some of the uh, examples. So just again, leanpub.com, white hat hacking. Uh, the book's about 20% done as of January 4th. Hope to have it done by the end of the month. Uh, but if you purchase it, you get uh, unlimited updates to it. So that said, let's get over to bootstrap.com and we're going to take a look at the CSS tags. And so you'll see that um, bootstrap is based on a grid system. And so the idea is that there's 12 equal columns on a web page. And so you can click on grid system and you can actually read all about this, but we're going to walk through it. Um, at the highest level, you'll see here, that I have created this page. Uh, you'll see it's pleat.html because I've gone ahead and coded it. And I've added an H1 tag and I've centered that. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I've created these three different columns for tutorials. And if I shrink this to mimic what a tablet would look like, you'll see that it goes into two columns. And if I shrink it again to mimic what a phone would look like, it goes into a single column. That's a responsive website. And so it's all done in CSS using Bootstrap. I'm gonna show you how we do that. Before we do, uh, according to the grid system, you'll note that Twitter wants you, or not Twitter, Bootstrap wants you to add everything, add rows within containers. So everything is going to be a row uh, within a container. And you can either add a container, which is a fixed width, or a container fluid, um, which actually will um, fill the screen that you're looking at. Fixed width will always stay within the center of your uh, browser window. Um, and so that's pretty much what I want to cover right here in terms of the theoretical. The other thing to note that we'll be taking a look at is uh, the grids come with, or rather the columns come with um, different sizings. And so you'll see here, the prefix will always be call dash XS, SM, medium, or LG. And these respond to the widths that are associated with those. So you'll see large devices, medium devices, small devices, and extra small devices. And so uh, again, keep this table handy because this is what's going to be referred to as we're working through these different column types. Now, enough with all the jibber jabber, let's actually get into writing some code. I'm gonna go into index.html here and you'll see that I've got this body. I've just got my H1, I've got my P tag. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make it look like this page. We're gonna have a centered H1 tag, or rather H3, and then some titles. I think I said H3, but we're gonna keep it H1. So first thing we need to do, as Bootstrap mentions, is create a div class equal to container. And then we're gonna create a row, right? And so now we're gonna add a div class. And what we're gonna add is actually call-xs-12. And we're gonna say text center. And so that's our div. And we're gonna add h1. And we're gonna say uh, bootstrap video tutorials, h1, and we're going to close up our divs. And let's get rid of this guy. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll just make sure that this is actually starting to look proper. So here we now have bootstrap video tutorials. So you'll note that I used text center here. That's something that bootstrap provides us. It actually goes ahead and applies the CSS and we can actually inspect this image or rather this piece. And you can see div class text center. It actually just applies text center. And here you'll see that uh, width 100 for the call XS and it's using a float left. And you can actually look at the CSS that Bootstrap is providing you. Um, but let's get back to our, our code here. So we have this first row, we need to create a second row. So let's go ahead and do that. 
and we need to create another div and let's start coding for the medium displays so and i'll explain in a second so md and we want this to be four and we're going to close that up and i'll explain it to you in a second and so we're going to create an h3 it's going to be tutorial one close that h3 and then we'll add some more ipsum here and i'll actually go ahead and copy that from our complete.html because it's a lot easier to grab this and we'll grab the closing tag as well and it looks like i missed something there we go that's all it was uh and we'll close that for now um so let's go ahead and copy a bunch of these and let's just change these up so we know what we're looking at and now we should have three columns and so there we go three columns so let's take a look at what we actually did so here we added another row because we've got one row on top of each other one for the title one for our actual content and then we added this class and call md4 and so what this is saying is out of the 12 possible columns we want to take four for this first piece for the second piece we want to take four and for the third piece we want to take four we want to do that on medium displays now you might be asking what happens for smaller displays or the extra large displays so for the extra large displays bootstrap will always use the smallest available sizing so if our screen went ginormous it would still use call md4 for that now for the smaller we can actually take a look and see what happens if we start scrunching this in you'll see that it gets uh here we don't actually get to our two column right it goes straight into a one column and so that is not what we want so in order to fix that what we can do is add another class to it and so we'll add an sm and we'll say six and so now we're going to copy this actually we can just take this take that line and here if we reload this page now we can shrink this you'll see that we go to a two column right and you'll see that one drop down so that's kind of giving us a hint as to what's going to happen here because we want to have six total columns so if we go ahead and we copy this actually I should take the space So here, instead of tutorial three, we're going to be at tutorial four, tutorial five, tutorial six. Again, we reload this page. What ends up happening is if you have too many columns, it, they just get dropped down. And so that's what's ended up happening here. We have one row uh, underneath the header, um, and that row has these six different pieces. But if it doesn't fit in a row, it just drops down to the next one. And so it's almost like it's creating virtual rows, but it's not because it's not actually there in CSS. And so that's what's happening here. But again, we need to add one more to this, and that's called XS, and this is going to be equal to 12. And so if we take this guy, we repaste all of this. Now, when we go ahead and we reload our page, we get rid of our inspection here. You can see we've got three columns, two columns, and then the one column that's actually provided. Um, and so that's how you create a responsive grid design. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. All you add from Bootstrap is just a couple classes, specifically your call, dash, whatever screen size you're going to be approaching. Um, and that's it for this video tutorial for the most part. Uh, I know it's not that complex, but that's what Twitter bootstrap actually provides you out of the box so again if this video tutorial helped you please leave a thumbs up leave a comment let me know in the next video tutorial we'll actually take a look at some search engine optimization with columns and show how we can render our content first but actually put a um, a sidebar there as well and so the reason why you want to render first is so that search engines pick that content up and then render your sidebar but you don't want them to be displayed that way so i'll show you how we can do that with twitter bootstrap we'll also look at how we can actually nest uh, columns uh, within rows so that you can have a full and then you can have a bunch of different uh, uh, chopped up different columns and rows underneath that so that'll be the next video tutorial again 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in that third one.